Hi guys, uh, this is Al here, a musician and music producer. And I want to talk today about modding the MWave SMC pad with the MPC pad sensitivity hack, which is kind of a way to make the pads more sensitive. Apparently first pioneered on some of the MPC uh, models, which had issues with pad sensitivity. So I bought the SMC pad about a week ago because I've been wanting to get into finger drumming and uh, don't have a lot of cash. I needed something to get me going and that would hopefully work well. And I must say that whilst I haven't gotten, you know, all aspects of it to work well with Ableton, I have been impressed with its functionality overall. It's, you know, I enjoy, okay, bearing in mind that it's a very reasonably priced unit. I like how it looks. Um, I like the MIDI suite software that comes with it. And um, overall been pretty impressed with it, except for one thing, and that is the pad sensitivity in my mind is, is ludicrous as in order to kind of make a, a pad trigger, you have to use very he heavy hands on the pads to trigger them. So after a few days of playing, it felt like my hand joints were going to implode and I was going to get early gout or something. And it's like, that's not what I wanted out of this unit. So I did some research, which showed me that, A, I'm not alone in this problem. You know, there's other people who have um, spoken about this issue. And one can't solve this through the settings in the MIDI Suite app, because it's not actually a software issue, it's a hardware issue. As I mentioned, there are quite a few comments online about this problem. And also, you'll notice that there are very few videos of anyone doing any actual finger drumming on these units, because you can't using the factory setup. Yes, you can trigger samples, but you can't do actual finger drumming you know, at speed and with ghost notes, etc. Well, not in my experience anyway. And I know that uh, I'm not the only one who felt like that. So I'm actually quite disappointed with this because, you know, the SMC pad is kind of like a flat flagship pad unit from MWave. And with just a little bit more effort in design, they could have had a killer unit right out of the box. Whilst also researching this problem, I came across the Akai MPC pad sensitivity hack that uh, beat makers have been using to mod some Akai models that also had uh, issues with their pads. And also saw a Reddit comment of a user modding another MWave model uh, with some success. So I thought, well, why not try the same? Uh, which probably wasn't a great idea at, you know, 11 o'clock at night. But uh, here we are. So a couple of things in showing what I did to implement this hack. I'm actually probably not the ideal guy to make this video because I don't really have technical training. Um, I usually follow other YouTubers when, when it comes to modding equipment. But I do have some experience making and fixing drones and doing basic repairs on equipment. But hopefully at some point a tech savvy person will come along and do an update video uh, explaining with more refinement some of the steps that one needs to take. So everything you see in this video is me flying by the seat of my pants hoping that I would be able to figure things out as I go. And as it turned out, I did actually, I was able to figure things out. Second thing is I never intended to make a video when I set out to do the hack uh, late at night. The idea for this video only came to me like when I was about 10, 15 minutes into the project and I thought if this works then I should share because I know, you know, by now others are struggling with this issue and it might be of benefit to uh, other users of the SMC pad. Additionally, I don't have a video recording set up, so I just took photos as I went along. So this video will look like it was made in 2005 and not in 2025 as I talked to a slideshow of photos that I took. Um, in other words, this is not going to be a very high production value uh, video. But the good news is that the hack worked. I now have a unit that is much more playable. And yes, although it's not a high-end machine or NPC unit, I can play it. You know, I'm not bashing the crap out of it to try to get a beat going. Um, of course, as a massive disclaimer, everything that follows is purely at your own risk, and I don't in accept any responsibility for outcomes you might have. Almost definitely this process will avoid any warranties for what it's worth and your mileage might vary. So you've been warned. And with that, let's get on to the hack. The first thing you need to do is remove the knobs off the front of the unit. Obviously we're going to be taking it apart so the knobs will interfere with removing the components from the internal part of the unit. So uh, yeah, remove them. You can see four of them have been removed. They are pretty pretty stiff and pretty tight some of them so if you need to maybe use a knife or a screwdriver wedge just to uh, just to lever them off all right so you're going to take all eight of the knobs off and then you 
turn the unit over and you're going to remove the underside screws. So you've got, uh, let's see, you've got nine screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws underneath. You're going to have to remove these feet um, and you'll find the screw underneath and then this is probably where uh, you'll lose your warranty and that is you're going to have to peel this back and there's a screw right there. So you're going to take out nine screws and or well, you're going to remove the four feet, you're going to take out nine screws. Okay, and then you're going to be able to remove the back plate. And once you've done that, this is what you'll see. You've got your battery here, um, you've got your switch, your USB connector here, and your MIDI output jack here. And you're going to be uh, removing eight switch. Uh, what's one, two, three, four, five, six? Uh, so ten, ten screws. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just put this, uh, highlighted this because when I was um, putting it back together, I mistakenly I put one of these screws back in here, which is a mistake, because this belongs to one of the screws from the back plate. So just remember to leave that open. Okay, so you're going to remove those screws, um, and these screws are tight, so be careful not to strip the heads or all the thread of these screws. It makes sense for them to be tight because obviously the pads, um, triggers are on this uh, PC board. So they want to make sure that it doesn't come loose after much much use. Um, and that's why when you put it back together, just make sure these are fairly tight. Um, but be careful not to strip the screws. All right, so once you've got the screws removed, then lift, I lift it from here, these sides. And you've got to be careful because you've got to sort of lift and gently disengage this connector section from uh, their holders. So just be careful you don't break anything while removing the board, but you're going to pull up and then sort of out towards you um, whilst being careful of these connectors. Yeah, yeah, yes. And the other thing is I did use a, a flat screwdriver just to help me get this going on the sides because it, uh, there's not a lot of space for your fingers. So you're going to need a bit of uh, hardware to help you just pick up this board from the sides here and remove it, which is going to leave you to see this. Now this is you've got your pads underneath. There's two things here. There's actually, well, three. You got your um, switch pads here, and then you've got a trigger, like a trigger sheet on top. Unfortunately, I didn't take a picture of it because um, it would have been useful to see. But this is basically a clear sheet on top with uh, these, I don't know, the I suppose the the electromagnetic or whatever um, squares glued on. And this is basically what, uh, when you bring it in contact with the sensors, is what creates the trigger. There's a hole here for the LED lights to shine through. So one thing to be very um, cognizant of, and I can't, I didn't even pay attention to this when I was removing. So I'm just assuming I got it right afterwards, but this sheet has got two sides. One is completely smooth and one has got these squares glued on so make sure that when you take it off you you pay attention to which side of the sheet um, is against the pads and which side which side of the sheet will be against the, the the pc board the point the side pointing to the pc board should be the one with the with the squares glued on so if you put this all back and you're not getting any sound then uh, maybe you made a mistake and put the sheet pointing the, the wrong direction so be careful well just pay attention to this sheet in particular and make sure that you know which is the right side up a when you remove it and then when you put it back in again and then you're left with the pads and this is what it looks like from the underside this is the underside of the pc board just for fyi you got the knobs here you've got the leds you've got the trigger plates and you've got side switches and these uh, these squares is obviously what um, triggers th these trigger plates here. 
And the problem is there's too much air between uh, these squares and these trigger plates, which is why you have to hit them really hard to get a, a to trigger the pad. So now it comes to the the heart of the matter. You've got these. Uh, you can see what I've done. Uh, you've got these pads here, and I put electrical tape onto them. Now I tried a couple of different arrangements. Um, these pads, the tape on these pads is really not very grippy. In other words, you when you um, try to stick them down, they don't stick very well because this is silicon, some form of silicon or something, and obviously they don't uh, take well to glue. So then other what I tried first was to uh, put the tape onto the trigger sheet, uh, which didn't work very really well, you know, on the underside of the trigger sheet. And then, okay, that didn't work. So then I tried three layers of tape on each pad, and that also really didn't work because uh, when I put the uh, PC board back on and just did, did some tests, um, testing on it, some of the pads didn't trigger at all and other pads triggered continually, which is not what you want. So I settled on one layer of electrical tape onto the pads and I put them on the pads even though they don't stick very well because they, it works better than if you uh, try to stick them onto the trigger sheet. So yeah, and I mean, I think experiment a bit, you might probably only will need one layer, but if you're still not sensitive enough, then maybe try two layers of these electrical tape onto the pads. And hopefully you'll do a bit neater than me. I'm not a particularly neat kind of uh, workman, but it works. So be careful not to cover the center grip, uh, center gas, because this is where the LED shines through. And that's it, basically. Now you're done. So then you uh, need to put everything back together, which is uh, put the trigger sheet back on here, uh, onto the pad, making sure you put it the right way, meaning the active side is pointing towards the up towards the PC board that you will reinstall. Then carefully put the, the board back onto the pads. Protect these connections when you insert them. So in other words, you're going to basically bring the board back at a little bit of angle from you pointing outwards, if obviously if these connectors are uh, away from you, pointing away from you. Bring the board in, slowly uh, sort of bring it down, but making sure that the switch and the USB connector and the MIDI jack are fitting their placeholders correctly. And while we're here, if when, when I was testing the configuration of tape I was going to do, I would just bring the board back in, do a couple of screws, and then you can see these here. I put my fingers there just to kind of simulate as if all the screws in, and then I'll turn it on, uh, turn on its side, and I'll sort of tap the pads to see uh, how that particular configuration was working. All right, so that's an aside. So now you've got the board back in carefully and you're putting the screws back in, remembering to leave that center hole open. You need to make the screws quite tight, just be careful of the threads and you don't strip the threads. And then you screw the underplate back on, um, same way. So you've got all these screws, you just screw them back on. And then you put the knobs back on and that's basically it. Try it out. Um, I'm going to put a beat that I was working, a very, very simple, uh, unprofessional beat in the background that I played because uh, I want to show you the difference. Unfortunately, I didn't make a recording uh, of me playing before I did this mod. But if anyone who has played the SMC pad, you'll know, hopefully when looking at me play, how much more sensitive and usable it is uh, after this hack. So anyway, just, you know, uh, just letting you know that obviously um, because it's, I've used it for such a short amount of time, I can't give you a long-term, uh, sort of my long-term experience with using it with this mod. You know, for instance, maybe the type, tape might move and you might need to be replaced or put it back into place. So you, who knows, maybe in six months I might need to just open up and have a look, see, and maybe replace some of the tape, but I, I don't know that for sure. So in summary, you're going to remove the knobs, you're going to remove the back plates, you're going to remove the PC board, uh, taking special care of the connectors. You're going to remove the trigger sheet, taking care of those electrical pads, and then add tape to the pads. Uh, me, I added one layer, but your results may vary, so experiment. All right, so now I'm just going to play a, a short, bad quality video to show you how much more playable it is. And um, excuse the, the kind of amateurish playing, 
but I'm going to mainly focus on showing you how much more sensitive the pads are. And for those of you who've played an SMC pad, uh, hopefully you'll be able to recognize um, how much more f uh, playable this mod makes the SMC pad. So obviously, um, all the usual stuff, um, I hardly ever make videos, but you know, what, whatever, uh, subscribe to my channel. It'd be lovely to see some of you guys making some, some you know, trying out this, this hack and then hope it works great and then make some beats uh, with your SMC pad. I would love to see your comments below where you are showing some of your beats. In the meantime, happy beat making and good luck. Ciao, ciao.